So we have an interesting situation this morning uh, in that we're toward the bottom of the bin of uh, the dry ice. So take a look before it gets all cloudy in here. So we got a lot of issues going on here. We got a rip in this plastic bag. That's a problem. I'll show you why. You got a rip down here. Totally my fault. Fail for me. You got this situation where the plastic bag actually comes out into this space. See? So you got to kind of dig back in there and pull that out. The problem is we don't want this material to end up in here. It's, it's got a grate, which prevents some of that, but you always have to be watching as you're dumping dry ice in there that you don't have any foreign substances going into the machine. So what I like to do is try to minimize my risk. So because I have a tear over here, that's unfortunate because I'm right-handed, but I'm gonna move all the ice somewhat manually over here so that I can scoop away from that. So here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna pull this over, break it up, keep moving it over. So I'll start scooping that in. Feed scoops. Basically takes 10 trips like this. That's a pretty cool sound, isn't it? That's 108 degrees negative affecting the alloy of the screen. So once you've got this open, it gets a little weird because you can't see anything. It's, you just kind of got to feel your hand around in there and feel for chunks. Because this stuff, as it sublimates, it kind of turns into a brick. It's pretty easy to break up. So it does take a little more time when you get down to the end of the, the bin. You see we're kind of getting close here. Stuff is awesome. That's the only saving grace about doing this in hot weather. You're working with something that's nice and cool and occasionally you get a breath of cool air. So this will hold 60 pounds, that bin or that hopper. So if we're using, which we will be, approximately one pound per minute. So here, classic example, right? Look at, this is what we don't want. Obviously that wouldn't go into the machine, but that's what you gotta watch out for. Don't let the plastic go in the machine. All right, so we're good to go. Fold this back up. Good practice just to give a little insulation. We're good to go. We're gonna wheel the machine around and finally we're gonna get started. All right, so I just wanna point out, we're building pressure. Uh, so we get 37, 38 pounds, pressure's coming up. So I'm gonna make these adjustments for this particular machine. One pound a minute, I'm happy with. So we've got the option to go down to one or two pounds per minute, up to two and a half. Um, you can kind of do some simple math if you're using a pound a minute and you work for an hour, you're gonna use 60 pounds. So theoretically, if you have 450 to 500 pounds of dry ice and you work nonstop with the trigger pulled, which is unlikely, um, you got six, seven hours worth of work that you can accomplish. So uh, the size of particle, when I'm starting, I wanna do small particle, that's the least amount of risk. Uh, larger particles are gonna take tar, glue, cosmoline, you know, really thick substances. It'll take those off better. Um, but when I'm starting on a car, I just want to kind of get a feel and have the least amount of risk because I don't want to take any more finishes off or at all if I can help it. So I'm going to go 0.3. Um, same thing with pressure. Forty pounds. Um, you know, you think about this as well. Your pressure is directly related to how close you are. So you come down in on something really tight low pressure could be more damaging than high pressure from a distance. Um, so again, you're gonna notice my technique 
I'm not saying it's the right technique, it's just what's evolved for me. Um, my gun's always moving. So if you watched the video yesterday, you, you remember, first thing we gotta do is purge that condensation out of the line. So I'm gonna do that right here. Not too much. Sometimes I want to test it just for sure and I'll go down to the ground, spray directly down to the ground, and if I see water going out, then I know I've still got condensation. Yeah, I'm dry, I'm good. So we're ready for uh, some protective gear. Okay, so this particular gun, the decibel level is not that high. The bigger gun can be up to 125 decibels. That's pretty serious. Uh, but for now, we're going to turn on our dry ice and we're going to start cleaning. We're going to get the most amount of dust out of this brake system, so let's go there right away. So for the purposes of your ability to see, it's gonna be a little bit awkward for me sometimes um, if I were just having my way with this car. That's what I'd be doing, but I'm trying to help you. So just realize it's gonna limit some of my uh, success by virtue of my uh, ability to get to the product. So here we go. So I know Matt's not like super picky about these factory paint splashes. I am. If he wants me to take them off later, I will, but you'll see me distance myself when I get to tricky stuff like that to make sure and preserve as much of it as I can. You don't really ever know the guy at the factory that put that yellow mark on there, if it was super clean and there's good adhesion. So you could take it off. So that spot right there is gonna come off. I don't wanna just go in on it, concentrate on it, and hit it hard and potentially make the plastic look different. So I'm gonna work with it a little bit, come back to it, take some more off, uh, and try to modulate the movement. So these are all the little practices that you learn the hard way for fails. Um, we also have some pretty crusty stuff here. Classic example of, I'm gonna to have to go to a larger particle size to get that off. So I'll show you, I'm gonna, I want you to concentrate here if you can, Mike. And I'm gonna hit this spot with the low or small particle size so you can see how slow and how ineffective it really is. And then we'll crank up the particle. So it's working, just a little slower than necessary. And you could say, well, geez, that's a safer way to go, but it also could be more derogatory. It could be worse because you're 108 negative constantly in one spot. So I'd rather get the product off with fewer passes um, as possible. So I'm gonna go up to one and a half. So watch the difference now.
And so here's the risk side of larger particle. If there's any paint that doesn't have good adhesion, you're higher risk with larger particle. So you're always trying to manage the time risk factor of where you are and what you're working on. And I can't stress enough how important it is to modulate your, your efforts. Like you don't, you don't always want to just go in and clean a spot. You just come back to it because as that dirt gets frozen, thaws, gets frozen, thaws, that back and forth helps the process. So don't just go crazy and just stay on one spot until you're happy with it. It, it could be worse than better. All right, so I'm going back to a smaller size. We'll come back to that later. I want to get into doing some of this. The painted surface, so you'll see we've got like a gray color. That's the undercoating from the factory. I can see a little purple in here. Um, I want to kind of be as careful as I can be with this little piece here. It's rubber, so that'll clean pretty good. Uh, we'll just go at it. Let's see what we got. Watch this cadmium plated. Water. So that's that condensation from it's drawing humidity out of the ambient air because it's a humid day here today. So we're going to be fighting that throughout our process here. So let me just show you what happens when we want to clear that off. So one of the things you can do to avoid that is to go less volume of dry ice. And the less volume uh, makes your process slower. So you gotta be mindful of that. So you're always balancing this stuff. So for me today, I'm just gonna go crazy. I'm gonna let this thing get wet. I'm gonna clean it up. We'll let it dry out. We'll come back and hit it again with less volume as a touch up. And then a lot of guys don't know, but we have a final process. If, if you're in Arizona or California, uh, New Mexico, it's a little easier because you don't have any humidity. We got to deal with it, and you know, most of the country has humidity. So uh, I'm going to go to town here and see what kind of process we can evolve. I'm always trying to determine what I want the general area to look like. So I'm sort of experimenting here first, blending just to see. I want to make sure I'm not taking the paint off that's underneath the dirt. So I'm trying to find that baseline of what this car looked like from the factory without disturbing those factory coatings. So the closer I get, the better I'm going to be. Awesome. I'm gonna try to switch the other side. Did you try that, Mike?
All right, so now we're gonna go for something, because I'm still trying to find the baseline that I'm happy with, so I'm gonna reveal a, a little trade secret that I love. All right, magic eraser, white eraser, Mr. Clean. So I got a little general cleaner on here, and I just wanna see what this looks like So I still got a few pieces of tar I want to get. <clears throat> I still got a blotchy appearance that I want to clean up. A lot of times, or more often than not, these are painted to match the car. In this particular car, it's not. It's not painted purple. So now I want to work on it, because that's pretty clean. I want to blend it. I've got some lighter area here, more concentrated. I want to blend that and see if I can get that whole section looking the same. So. A lot of people have seen my finished work and they think, what takes so long? Man, this is an awesome process. I've seen other guys just blow through there. <clears throat> As I said yesterday, if there's cosmoline on here and we take the cosmoline off, it's perfectly clean underneath. This didn't have any cosmoline on it. So it, it takes a little more energy and time to get the process down right. And as you work on the entire car, you start to learn the settings and the technique and the method so that it becomes quicker and easier but starting out I'm always just cautious. So it went up a little higher pressure and larger size and we're going to see if we can have a, a little more dramatic effect. So I thought I'd tease you a little bit <clears throat> with the cadmium plated bolts. There's going to be a lot of that when we get underneath. It's going to be a lot more fun. This is pretty tricky stuff, and I, I kind of wanted to lead with the hard part. Wheel wells have always been the most challenging aspect because you, you are really tiptoeing around trying to make sure that you're not taking off factory finish or you're leaving the car to look like it would have looked when it left the factory. So it is tricky. And see all the water from the condensation? We got no water coming out of our gun. So I shut the dry ice off. That's as dry as it can be. So it's not moisture in the gun. It's the ambient air and that cold temperature around. So you can kind of see how I'm reverse painting. I'm coming back, I'm leaving, I'm coming back, and I'm blending and trying to get that section to be consistent in its visual. And part of that is because you have to come at different angles to remove the film or dirt that you're needing to get to, so you can't just always go head on. So, a little weird. So I'm gonna turn my settings down to do this plastic liner because these liners are pretty soft and I don't want them to look really weird. And what do I mean by weird? Um, if the plastic is super soft, this is not an abrasive process, but like it'll eat foam. It'll take foam right off. So yeah, it'll, it'll make plastic look gray instead of black or have a sheen to it. So we've had that challenge in the past. These are pretty low settings. And it can be a little difficult because because we're dealing with the ambient humidity, you can kind of get lost. Is that just getting a little bit wet? Or am I actually taking the dirt off? So you might be able to see it on camera, I'm not sure. The tar and the dirt or the foreign substance on the substrate actually turns white while you're doing the work. So you can kind of test and see 
that you're actually, that's something you need to come back to and try to keep working at to get it off of there. It shows up under the gun and under the spray as white. So like, I don't, Mike, can you guys, can you see that you think? Yeah, so there's a little spot here. It's, could be roadkill, uh, but watch it turn white. And I'll go back and forth a few times and we'll make that go away. That didn't take long. And you, trust me, when somebody says, how long does it take to clean my car? You never know. That might've taken me a minute if it was something super difficult, but instead it took two seconds. You don't know. have to do it Mike I mean I, I it's just like it's right there I mean I, I can't resist all right can, can y'all see this excess wax underneath this trim we got low settings we're 24 psi check it out guys That's, that is definitely, oh, this is actually just sublimating away, so I'll put some dry air on it, watch it go away. No, I didn't screw up Matt's paint. So that's condensation. So we'll, we'll bring that back to room temperature. This is what the guys in the dry climates don't have to manage. I don't have to do this, I just, I want you to see that I didn't screw up <laughs> that <new> toy. <laughs> it's just so satisfying. I mean, it's the funnest thing to do. Um, it beats the heck out of the grimy, dirty stuff, but it's all, it's all good. So back to the liners. Sorry for the, uh... oh look, see? So even at very low temperatures, see how we got a little white spot there, a little white spot? We've got a scenario where these are so soft that we can't even touch them at 24 PSI, smallest particle, without changing the way they look. So I'm committed now. now I know they're replacing these, but I want you to see the challenge that comes with this. And if I want to make this look consistent, I got to match it all. I got to make it all look the same. There is some cosmoline down here that we want to remove. I think it's time to break out the uh, the old man chair. I'll be right back. It took me a while to find this beast, but it's the arrow creeper. They use it for detailing the underside of airplane wings. So here's what's awesome about it. All the way down to the ground or all the way up. I got my pillow. Just sit back and relax. You spend eight, nine hours doing this You'll want the old man chair. All right, let's get that cosmoline off. All right, so we've got almost all that off. You'll notice the other challenge is <clears throat> when we remove anything, the area around it gets more concentration. So when we have a soft plastic like this, you see how we can see the ghosting of the different particles. So you know that's something that you got to work on to try to bring back to be consistent looking. So I'm spending a lot of energy and time on this knowing that he's putting new ones on which is cool but 
you know, not everybody's going to replace them. Or sometimes, like I did a 928 Porsche, you can't get them anymore. So you got to just make the best of it. And you could also say that, gee, maybe a more traditional method of cleaning to get that off, but you're going to have abrasion with whatever process you use. So that soft plastic, when you run into it like this, it's just a, that's a reality that you have to manage. We're gonna finish this out. Uh, for now, let me finish doing this wheel well. We're gonna move, get the car higher in the air. We're gonna move in to do some of the suspension parts. Pretty gratifying. Um, as we get into it, little by little, you're gonna see uh, that it just takes time, patience, just like anything else that you do at a high level of the car. Time and patience and experimentation. And I can promise you the first hour that you spend on any car takes longer than the last hour. So if we're still rolling, um, you can't really see that well, but you have to have an eye for this. You gotta be able to distinguish areas that you wanna go back and try to blend. Um, I did turn my volume down quite a bit. It makes the process a little slower, but it's reducing the water, or the moisture, or the ambient air issue that I have. You know, we brag about this all the time. Oh, it's a waterless process. Well, that's true. There's no water coming out of here, but we got to deal with ambient air temperature. And that's why in the ideal setting, you know, uh, 70 degree, 30% humidity, air conditioned space would be great. All right, so we're just running the air system a little bit here. We had a real life challenge that for the moment we've overcome. I've got this lovely 30 horse Chinese built compressor. It's the only company that would get me a single phase compressor. I do regret it, um, but I got it, so I'm managing it. So it overheated, so we figured out one of the cooling fans on the inverter was bad, so, well, bad enough, we cheated and we gave it a kickstart and it's working now, so we went to lunch and we lost the smell of plastic in the building, so we're gonna keep going. Uh, and if, you, listen, it, in this process, you know, you, you manage, if that thing decides to call today its day of death, I was I go rent a diesel compressor and you know we'll keep shooting. So um, our ice sat in the machine through lunch. It it's got a vibrating system. It should have continued to stay loose, but you might see me squeezing the trigger. That's just basically breaking the ice up that's right at the mouth of the, the machine. So if you see me hitting this thing a lot, it's because I'm trying to get that broke up. So just part of the process. So I'm gonna work some more on this. We did also play around with, you see how this is a little darker? It's got a, a nice, more factory sheen to it. So, you know, when we did this area, it gives it like a gray look and texture. And it really was pretty easy to get that knocked off. All right, so we're gonna go back at it. I'm just gonna do my thing and uh, probably get in the way a little bit, but we'll get this wheel well done now. Oh, it's like, it sucks. This sucks. Cause now I gotta go in. It's too, it's too bricked. That was bad. I, when I had the compressor problem, I should have taken the time to unload the ice. So now I gotta dig in it and get it loose. So it's gonna take me a few minutes. This is like the royal pain. So what's happening here is, it's like, this is actually good. All the wrong stuff has happened. So I'm gonna, let me go shut the compressor off. I'm at the bottom of the bin, which means that there's always risk like this plastic being broke, like we talked about earlier. So I gotta move the ice 
from the area that was broke, the bag, and keep in mind as you move it, the bag gets brittle wherever the ice touches it. So you don't want to leave it on there too long. All right, so now I got it kind of in a happy place. So now I get to go in here, dig out all the ice. Why? Because it's, br as I call it, bricked. It's sublimated enough over lunch that it won't go in the feeder area, which is a good point for me to remind you, no matter what you're tempted to do, never, ever put any sharp objects in the hopper. I mean, obviously this is here for a reason, but that feeder wheel at the bottom of the hopper is a very soft material, and you don't want anybody in there with a screwdriver or ice pick gouging away at this. You gotta get it loose by hand and use this plastic scoop to get it out. And I have had extreme cases where, you know, you, you can't get all of it out and by this method, because it gets packed down into the last little bit. So like here's a piece that was bricked. And so once you get this all out, if there's still a little bit left, maybe you gotta just verify the machine is working properly and that feeder wheel is bringing material in. See those rods? So that's what's happening there. That white wheel looks like a tractor wheel and that's the feeder. So now that we know that's clear, I can reload the hopper and we're full. So that's just a quick lesson on don't leave your ice in there for more than 30 minutes or you're going to have a problem and you're going to have to dig it all out of there and start over again. So. I've kind of pulled this bag little by little and the product just keeps rolling in it. So to get the last little bit out of the bin, it's just easier to grab it like this. All right, so what's the big idea about this plastic? So take a look in here one more time. Here is a shard of water ice. So if we get this in the machine and we're doing something very delicate, water ice is abrasive. It can strip paint off. It can do anything wrong. So we don't want water ice. And this is, this is from condensation from this area being cold. So like I've got some dry ice down here, if you see. I'm not using that. That came from the plastic bag being torn. I'm not gonna risk putting that two handfuls of dry ice in the machine and hurting the car just to save uh, one-tenth of a penny of dry ice. So you just gotta be disciplined about it. I've gotten the most out of this bin that I can. That's it. It's pretty resilient. I'm gonna go a little bit larger on everything. All right, see right here? There's a spot that the large particle size that I'm using took away some of the paint. So we've reached our limit. We gotta back it down a little bit. Every once in a while you get a gem, something that just blows right off. It's kind of fun. So that's the fun stuff. We're gonna have more of that. This has been pretty tricky, but we found our, I think we found our mojo here and we've got something to work with. So. 
I'm just gonna touch this up a little more, uh, probably do some hand work on it after it dries, and then a final with low volume. That way we won't have as much moisture. Plus, we gotta do the backside of all this when we get the car in the air. So I don't wanna go crazy and make this perfect yet. So yeah, you can kind of see this is an evolution. You know, when, when you see somebody just make four or five passes, that's because it had a bunch of protectant or cosmoline on it since new. We're managing uh, the other side of the coin, which is where the real world is. All right, so we're gonna get some money shots here. This is gonna be kind of fun. We're still gonna have to deal with this crazy stuff, but check it out, guys. I know it's cool, huh? <laughs> so let's uh, real quick let's show everybody. Uh, let's answer the question that everybody asks. Now that's true. The floor was dirty before I started, but you want to know where the dirt goes? It goes on the floor, and we push it out the door. It's light dust, but just know everything in your shop is going to have a light film of dust on it that's got a surface like this. That's just part of the territory. Let's have some more fun. cranked up pretty high right now because we're going to do aluminum. There's no risk. We just want to make it really, really clean. A 
more volume. Yeah, pretty fun. So you'll notice you really want to get it. You want to be as perpendicular. Like this, this is angled a little. It's not like this, it's like this. So I want to angle it that way. That's your most effective shot. You can get dirt on the backside, so I want to be careful with the cameras, but that's what's keeping this from looking like flawless. So I'll try not to torture Mike here. So I'm putting up with the moisture, which is the humidity in the air. It's getting ready to rain here probably another hour or so, so it's getting pretty thick out. I don't really care about the water because it's not invasive or hurting anything. I want to get the product off after the car dries out. We'll do the final clean on it. So uh, this is a, here's a little trade secret I'm going to show you. Let's keep an eye on this and watch what happens. Sit tight, I got a little surprise for you here. All right, so uh, we're gonna show you a little bit of magic here. I'll tell you what this is in a little bit. Let me show you first. And I, I need one of Matt's sprayers. <laughs> My sprayers suck. <laughs> hey, here we go. Quadruple Ot steel wool. I have gotten harassed quite a bit about how I dry ice clean my exhaust systems. So I'm pulling back the curtain. So this is a product that I use two or three days in a row. So I'm trying to fast forward here for you just to see. Uh, it, with time, it works better. But I think you're going to get the gist of it right now. And you can see, <coughs> excuse me, you can see what's possible. Dry it first, get all the contaminants and everything off you can, the scale rust or any weirdness. And then that's a cross between hard acid and vinegar. 
if you were like really scared, you could use vinegar instead. But that's a product called Ospho. You can go to any hardware store and buy it. O-S-P-H-O, Ospho. And what's beautiful about it is if you, if you use it and then wipe it off dry, it will stay looking like that. If you spray it on or use it and you leave it damp, it will look mottled and kind of weird. And then you gotta go back and do it again. You can't leave it that way, but if you, if you wipe it off like that so it's dry, dry, that's, that's what you got. Now, if you wanted to, like that frame of that Ford Lightning truck I did, you could spray it with matte clear afterwards. If you have bare metal, spray it with matte clear and it's golden. I'm always trying to make stuff better, even if it's just an incremental amount. So we got some surface rust on the front side of these cadmium plated lines. And I think we can make that look a little better. So we're gonna start out just by getting some product on there first and allowing it to work a little bit. It, it is something that we might come back to and hit a few times. But it's you know obviously going to be discolored and different because we're not putting cadmium back on or whatever plating is on there. But like here, you can almost see it's starting to, we're losing the orange. And you know, this is one of the things we like to get the, people say, can you take rust off with the dry ice cleaning or dry ice cleaning? Well, yeah, we, we can take rust off. They're just the flakes and the, and the, you know, the loose stuff it takes something beyond that to get the balance. So what's gonna happen here is we're gonna take this down over the next 48 hours and we're probably gonna end up with cadmium plate and bare metal. So yeah, you'd wanna treat this with something when we're done, but just keep an eye on this. We'll come back to it and you can kinda of see what's happening here we've removed a good portion of the orange ugly rust. And so depending on how much fine detail work you want to do, like right here, you know, we cleaned this. It's got a little surface rust on it. But if we just work this a little bit, I mean, it just depends on how OCD you really are. If you just work it a little bit, it's not gonna hurt the painted surface. We're quadruple ot steel wool and if you want to go that next level and tinker with stuff like this it, it can get out of control I suppose but we'll do the same with this we'll come back to it because there's there's some rust on the, the part like this bottom of this control arm is got it's got bare metal and there was a little rust on there so the thing about this OSPO is, as long as you get it off of surfaces, you don't want it to discolor or do weird, it's fine. So let that soak up a little bit. So I already knew that these shocks are getting replaced. Well, struts, excuse me. That's the 58 year old coming out of me. Uh, in the process of getting this crazy gummy sticky stuff off, how weird is it? that I can save this little decal, but I lost some paint at the bottom of this strut. You might be wondering. Well, the reason is that these are notorious. The bottom of these struts are notorious for not having good adhesion, paint chipping off of these. That's the first place that you lose paint on any car, no matter what the mileage. It's just gonna look that much worse the older it gets. So that's not uncommon for that to be loose. And you know, I, 
you can see that it's it's got a little rust to it. It could be orange primer, but it looks like rust to me. I don't know, but if we needed to, we could touch that up if they wanted to keep these struts. So there's all these little things and tricks that you learn as time goes on. Um, but it is weird how some of this stuff plays out. Well, we're gonna we're gonna go after this thing and and just keep moving our way around and uh, bringing it to life and bringing it out so you can kind of see what's happening here. So the the metal where it's metal and the plating is gone, you know it's going to be bright silver, and this white right here you can see. See what I mean? Yeah, it's hot hot and dirty but the results are overcome that and make it pretty fun so I'm gonna work my way through this section of the car after Mike heads out we we'll try to get this corner all complete and done I'll work work on this these lines a little bit more tomorrow uh, it's gonna be crazy like if you if you enjoyed this thought it was pretty interesting that's, that's gonna be the bomb so Make sure and come back and see the next video.